the one and only has been finally released and it's dominating the gaming zone for about a week now. So I was thinking that I definitely need to make a video about it and it's amazing gameplay. But then I remembered that I'm not actually a big fan of the franchise. I know that I belong to a minority, but yes, we exist. Anyway, so instead, I decided to make a list of five survival horror games, but not any five survival games. I'm talking about five titles that I personally believe that they're actually better than Resident Evil itself. Hey, 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 you shut your face! If we want to hear you talk, I will shove my arm up your ass and work your mouth like a puppet! I know that I might sound crazy, but the best thing about gaming is that there's enough space for all tastes and opinions, or at least that's what I'm hoping for. So without further ado, in this video, I'm going to showcase five games from different generations and with unique styles, but overall, I think that they provide an experience that's basically more memorable and even richer than Resident Evil games. I'm Samuels. I work for the company. It's about your mother. We think we may have found her, Amanda. Alien Isolation is set in 2137, 15 years after the events of the first Alien movie. The game follows the story of Amanda Ripley, the daughter of Ellen Ripley, the main character from the original movie. Amanda is an engineer investigating the disappearance of her mother, who has been missing for over a decade. She is sent to the space station Sevastopol to retrieve the flight recorder from the Nostromo, which is the ship on which her mother was a crew member. Upon arriving at Sevastopol, Amanda finds the station in disarray, with the crew dead or missing and the station overrun by aggressive androids and a terrifying alien creature. She must navigate the station and its various levels, solving puzzles, avoiding danger, and scavenging for resources to survive. Throughout the game, Amanda must evade the alien, which can track her down using sound and movement. The player must use stealth and cunning to avoid detection, hiding under desks, in lockers, and behind objects to stay out of the creature's sight. The game also includes combat mechanics, but Amanda is often outmatched and outgunned by the station's various threats. Being outmatched and outgunned is the most important element in a perfect survival horror game. That's how the survival part becomes more realistic, which is honestly not so much the case in Resident Evil games, where I pretty much had enough weapons to avoid experiencing any panic or fear. Anyway, as Amanda explores the station, she uncovers the truth about what happened to the crew and the cause of the station's current state. She eventually learns that the company, Wayland yutani 
was conducting illegal experiments on a station involving the alien creature. Amanda must use this knowledge to help herself and the remaining survivors escape Sevastopol before it is too late. Overall, Alien Isolation is a tense and atmospheric game that immerses players in the terrifying world of the Alien franchise. It received critical acclaim for its storytelling, visuals, and sound design, and has become a fan favorite among horror and science fiction hardcore supporters. So if you're into survival horror and you want to dive into an epic experience that's not Resident Evil, then I don't know how you can miss this title. I'm here, Relaine. There should be two priming mechanisms to unlock the manual release. I see them. scares the hell out of you. We have to look out for each other. That is all we got. You could have saved a few lives. There was no hope, there was no time, there was no room, okay? We had already turned on each other when the hordes arrived. Order! Hope you're right about your old lady, Deke. You gotta ask yourself, what does it matter if everyone else is dead? Days Gone is set in a post-apocalyptic world where a global pandemic has turned most of humanity into zombie-like creatures called Freakers. The game follows the story of Deacon, a former outlaw and drifter who has survived the pandemic and is trying to find a reason to keep going in this harsh new world. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Do what you want. Stay back. I just want to talk. Uh, Nero Protocol 2-7 states clearly that, that if conducting operations in quarantine zones, if I encounter any civilians or sub... sub d d civilians! That I'm forbidden from making contact. Really? See, that sounded to me like... Um, making contact. Yes. Yes, it did. The story begins two years after the pandemic has ravaged the world, and Deacon is working as a bounty hunter alongside his friend and fellow survivor Boozer. Deacon is haunted by the memories of his wife Sarah, who he believes died in the early days of the pandemic. However, he still holds on to hope that she might still be alive somewhere. Ma'am, I got everything on the requisition form. Does this look like fabric softener? No, ma'am. Okay, well, why don't you read it? The gameplay in Days Gone revolves around exploring the game world, completing missions and objectives, and battling against various enemies. The game features a day-night cycle where the player must balance their activities between daytime scavenging and nighttime stealth and combat. One of the game's main features is its dynamic weather system, which affects the gameplay in various ways. Rain can make the Freakers stronger, while snow can slow down the player's movement and make it more difficult to track enemies. The game also features a motorcycle, which serves as the player's primary mode of transportation. The player can upgrade their bike with various parts and accessories to improve their speed, durability, and handling.
Days Gone also includes a crafting system that allows the player to create items such as bandages, ammunition, and explosives using materials found in the game world. The player can also scavenge for food and supplies to stay alive. In conclusion, the gameplay in Days Gone emphasizes exploration, survival, and combat, offering a challenging and immersive experience for players. And I don't even think that I need to talk about the amazing visuals that make the world and the apocalypse look more realistic than ever. But if you want to watch a low IQ review of the game, you can always check IGN's review which pretty much explains everything that doesn't apply to the game. Oh, so straightforward. Yet during its 60 odd hour ride, Days Gone loses its focus with repetitive missions, a thematically unsatisfying storyline, and an excess of bugs and busy work. You on drugs? These issues combine with a dreary, uninteresting world to add up to an uneven and mostly toothless zombie game. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Apparently, she was playing another game that was completely different than the one we bought. This is Mark Copeland for Radio Free Oregon. Don't believe the lies. They look pretty broken to me, Cope. But hey, whatever you say. Eh, nothing wrong with a little... <laughs> Missiles. And the ground burned to ash. And the seas boiled. And people turned into shadows. So let us not fear the heretics at our door. Even with their iron steeds standing before us, stinking of machine oil and shining its heretical light upon us! Remember, most of the country has been destroyed or occupied. Even those who speak our language might be enemies, by conviction or out of fear. We will not falter! Let us steel ourselves against them! For this is our hour of glory! Amen! Let's move out, Artyom. Metro Exodus is a survival horror game set in a post-apocalyptic world following a nuclear war that has devastated the planet. The game follows the story of Artyom, a survivor living in the Moscow Metro tunnels with other survivors who embarks on a journey across Russia to find a new home for his people. You will assume the role of Artyom as he navigates through a variety of environments, including deserts, forests, and ruins, both above and below ground. The game features a day-night cycle, weather conditions, and a dynamic environment that affects gameplay and combat. To be honest, everything that I said about Days Gone can pretty much apply to this one too. They both contain a detailed world that's hard to find in other titles. Anyway, combat in Metro Exodus is based on a combination of stealth and action, with players being able to use a variety of weapons including rifles, shotguns, pistols, and grenades. The game features a unique weapon modification system that allows players to customize their weapons with attachments, scopes, and suppressors to suit their playstyle.
You can also craft and modify items such as gas mask filters, med kits, and ammunition using resources found throughout the game world. The crafting system is an essential aspect of the game as players must scavenge for resources to survive and progress through the game. The game's open world aspect allows players to explore a variety of locations, complete side missions, and encounter various characters and factions. Players can also choose to approach missions and encounters in different ways, whether through stealth, fighting, or diplomacy, you name it. Another key gameplay feature is the use of the Aurora, a customizable train that serves as the player's base of operations and mode of transportation. The player can upgrade and modify the train with resources and parts found throughout the world. In addition to the main story campaign, Metro Exodus also features a variety of challenges and modes, including a new Game Plus mode and a sandbox style mode called Ranger Hardcore. Are you not entertained? I mean, what else does this game have to offer to prove that it's worth your time? It's literally a survival masterpiece in every aspect and the only title I can think of that can probably compete with it is definitely the upcoming Stalker game. Whatever you do, don't go out in the dark. Stay in the light. The Deerfest guests have already started to arrive. Just ran into one on the ferry. Famous artist, no less. Alice? Alice? My wife, Alice, she's missing. Calm down, Mr. Wick. Last night I woke up to a nightmare. I was missing a week. What had happened to me? I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it. With it, I could save myself. I could save Alice. My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. This is not the first time I feature Alan Wake in one of my videos, but I honestly cannot, absolutely cannot talk about the best survival horror games without mentioning this one. It's literally hard to compare it to any other game of the same category. It's not about zombies. It's not about an apocalypse. It's not about some sort of disease affecting humanity. It's not about any of that. It simply provides a whole new theme that was pretty much unavailable in the gaming world as a whole. Let me remind you of what I said about it last time so I can avoid sounding repetitive like a parrot. Alan Wake is seen as one of the most iconic psychological horror games that has ever been created. It is renowned for its superb narrative, which is wrapped in secrecy, pulling players into the game, making it difficult for them to tear themselves away while they confront a sinister, oppressive entity. Trust me, I'm not exaggerating, that's pretty much the opinion of all hardcore horror fans like me who enjoyed this title back in 2010 and still feel nostalgia whenever we hear its name because we pretty much considered it a revolution in the genre back then and we actually believed that it was ahead of its time. I need help! Deposit! I need two premium cabins for rent in... Oh, hell! 
Carl Stucky. Pleased to meet you. Non-refundable reservation has required. Fair and square. The game follows the story of a best-selling thriller novelist named Alan Wake, who travels to the small town of Bright Falls, Washington, to cure his writer's block. However, things quickly take a dark turn as Wake's wife disappears, and he begins to experience supernatural events related to the plot of his latest novel. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without a light. The gameplay of Alan Wake consists of discovering different places and fighting against possessed townspeople and shadowy creatures. One of the game's unique features is its use of light as a weapon, with players using various light sources such as flashlights and flares to weaken enemies before finishing them off with conventional weapons. The story is presented in an episodic format, with each chapter ending on a cliffhanger and the overall narrative featuring themes of fright, mystery, and psychological thriller. The game also features collectible manuscript pages that provide further insight into the plot and characters, but to be honest, collecting them can be a pain in the butt, which explains why I ignored most of them all the way to the end. I arrived at Bright Falls the night Alice had disappeared. I had a chance to find Alice? out what had happened. Alice? I remembered being surprised to see the cabin dark. Alice would have never turned the lights off. I remembered thinking I caught a glimpse of her form underwater, sinking into the darkness. <gasps> Diving after her was the last vague memory I had of that night. After that, the next thing I could remember was waking up behind the wheel of the crash car and finding the first pages of the manuscript. Beyond this lost memory, there was nothing. I had to if you haven't played this game before, then you're so lucky because you'll enjoy the remastered version more than anyone else, especially after the amazing improvement in the visuals. And as I said before, you better get your hands on this game and get an idea about its plot as soon as you can because the good news is that we will be getting a sequel this year after more than a decade of wait. And to be honest, it's my most anticipated title regardless of the amazing other games that are expected to release in 2023 and I will definitely choose it over the remake of Resident Evil 4 at any time. Eat you alive. This story is a monster. And monsters wear many faces. <laughs>I don't think any of you didn't expect that this game would be number one on this list because anyone who played it or is familiar with it knows exactly that it's basically the definition of a survival horror masterpiece where pretty much you can find anything you would love to experience from this genre. In The Evil Within, you take on the role of Sebastian Castellanos, a detective investigating a mass murderer at a mental hospital. As the investigation progresses, Sebastian finds himself trapped in a nightmarish world filled with monsters, traps, and even puzzles. The gameplay is focused on survival and exploration. 
Players must use weapons and stealth to defeat or evade enemies, but be careful because resources such as ammunition and healing items are actually very limited. The game also features a crafting system, allowing players to create items such as ammo and traps by collecting materials scattered throughout the world. The levels are designed to be non-linear, with multiple paths and hidden areas to discover. Some sections of the game are also designed to be puzzle-based, requiring players to find clues and use their wits to progress. One of the unique features of The Evil Within is the psychological horror element, which creates a sense of unease and confusion in the player through the use of disorienting visuals and sound effects. Lady, am I going crazy? Huh? Now what makes you say that? I'll be waiting. The game also features a variety of boss battles, each with its own unique challenges and mechanics. But the two scariest and most powerful ones that will stick with you are definitely Laura and the Keeper. Laura is a female monster that can crawl on walls and ceilings. She is incredibly fast and can do a lot of damage with her long arms and sharp claws. To defeat her, you must aim for the weak spot on her back, but good luck with that. It's easier said than done. The Keeper is a large, chainsaw-wielding enemy that pursues the player relentlessly throughout the game. He is incredibly strong and can take a lot of damage, but he moves slowly and is vulnerable to fire. I'm going to stop here because I don't want to spoil the battles for you. But in general, The Evil Within is a game that certainly cannot be missed. It feels like a movie that you can control, and I pretty much consider it a combination between Resident Evil and Silent Hill. The protagonist, Sebastian, is likable and charismatic. The environment is dreadful and always keeps you on high alert. The enemies are unique and actually scary. The bosses are incredible, and the list goes on and on. It's really sad that there's no news about an upcoming sequel of this game. It's one of the most underrated franchises out there, and it's a shame that it's not getting the same hype as Resident Evil and Silent Hill. I mean, I honestly can't believe that this beautiful game is nine years old already, if you put it side by side with some of the recent titles that were released after 2020, you'll find that it can literally still compete with them and even beat them. <laughs> Haven't you figured it out yet? Oh, he loves tormenting others. Has to let them know he has the upper hand. Lays out the bait, gets his victim all worked up. His unholy traps. When it was happening to me, I could see what was going on. I could see it, but I couldn't turn back. I had to know. I had to know the truth. 
These were the five titles that I personally consider the best survival horror games ever made. They're not the only ones, of course, but they definitely stand out from the rest, at least for the last decade, even though I personally enjoyed Resident Evil 7 so much, and it's basically the best part of the whole series because it's actually the only one that's scary and makes you stressed to survive. Anyway, if you disagree with my choices, make sure to tell me in the comments below, and if you think that I missed an amazing survival horror game, then please do me a favor and mention it. I'm always on the hunt for any good survival experience I can put my hands on. Anyway, enough talking for today, and see you in the next video.